Hi there. My name is James Blair. Um, I'm one of the maintainers of the Zool project. Uh, and I'm here to show you uh, this lovely ASCII art, which uh, Clark helped me make, uh, and, um, and then also talk about Zool. So uh, what is Zool? Zool is a project getting, I promise this won't take very long. This is a Zool update session. But uh, in case you're not familiar with it, Zool is a gating system. Um, and uh, what we mean by that is that uh, changes, uh, it helps you merge changes, but only when they pass tests, and it does so automatically. Um, it's especially good at handling changes across different repositories, what we call cross-repo dependencies, and these are used heavily in the OpenStack project um, because of all of the different components that make up OpenStack. Uh, it lets developers uh, make a bunch of changes uh, and say that they depend on each other and Zool tests them all together. Um, it tests these changes uh, as if they, uh, they had all been merged. Um, this is a really subtle, it almost sounds obvious, but it's a really subtle and important distinction. It, it means that we're not testing the change as the developer wrote it. We're testing the change and all of the changes that it depends on um, exactly as they're going to be when they land. So we know when they land, it was tested correctly and it was all, they were all tested together. Um, and Zool does all of its test and deployment orchestration with Ansible, which means it's a very flexible system. Anything you can do with Ansible, you can do with Zool, uh, and it lets you write some pretty sophisticated uh, test and deployment jobs that, uh, that, that work in environments, multi-node environments, uh, things like that. Uh, so what have we been doing uh, since Berlin? Um, I'm assuming you tuned into our previous episode of this. Um, but uh, since then, um, we've made eight releases. Uh, releases are, we release fairly frequently. We don't do so on a set schedule. We, we just release basically whenever, uh, whenever things settle down in development and we've sort of completed a, uh, the current thought that we're on with uh, with developing. We also make sure that before we, we actually make a release um, that we've restarted the Open Dev Zool, which is the, the very large installation of Zool that we use to, to help the OpenStack project. Um, we make sure that we've restarted that and actually burned it in for a little bit. Um, but we actually restart that one frequently. Zool is designed to itself be continuously deployed and that's sort of why we have so many releases, why, it's, why each release itself isn't that important. Um, uh, it's because every commit to us is important and every commit is uh, perfectly, uh, <clears throat> perfectly suitable for, for running a, a production system. Um, so since then, uh, since our, our, our last update in Berlin, we've uh, made a number of changes, uh, I guess in a couple of different categories. Um, this one here at the top about jobs controlling which child jobs run uh, is, is a pretty neat thing that we did uh, that, that sort of goes to being able to build more complex uh, pipeline job graph scenarios. So uh, jobs, you can, you can run jobs that do any amount of work and then as a result of that work, decide what should happen next. So you can, you can do some pretty complex and sophisticated stuff there. Um, we've added uh, features about artifact handling. Um, uh, jobs can return URLs to artifacts that they've built. Those artifacts can then be passed down to child jobs uh, or even um, stored in a database and then passed over to changes that depend on the change that ran the job that made that artifact. Um, that uh, sounds kind of mind-bendy, but the, the end result of that is it lets us do uh, one of the cool new things that we're doing with containers, um, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, we have added support for region local executors. So if you're deploying Zool in a situation where you need the, the Zool executor, which is the, the component of Zool that actually runs Ansible for jobs, if you need that to be talking over some kind of private network or interface or something to the, the location where the actual uh, test resources are, uh, you can use this feature to, to sort of distribute that component out to where it's needed in the network topology. Um, uh, we, we have this idea in Zool about sharing jobs between different installations. It's 
sort of a theme, I guess, that we're building on, uh, uh, share, sharing uh, everything and then uh, doing things across projects. So um, th there's, a, there's a repository that we call Zool Jobs, which has jobs that people from anywhere in the Zool community have written uh, that might be useful by anybody else in the Zool community. And so anytime that we come up with a job that, that that we think could be useful for other people. Instead of putting it in some private open, OpenStack uh, jobs repository, we put it in the Zool jobs repository and make it available to anyone. Uh, one of the problems that we had with that is we wanted to write jobs to do things like upload images to Docker Hub or upload uh, SDIS to PyPy or things like that. And those required secrets and we didn't actually have a good way of of defining those jobs in one place and then using the secrets elsewhere. We've corrected that and now it's now, it's now easier to um, share jobs between different installations and, uh, and use installation local secrets for them. Um, in NodePool, we've added support for uh, AWS and OpenShift as uh, resource providers. Um, and this last bullet list is, is kind of neat. It's, um, we've added support for speculative container execution. So, um, it's, uh, it's a thing that I talked about in the keynotes on Monday. Uh, and if you'd like a really high level view of that, you can, uh, you can, uh, you can, uh, go back and watch the videos of that. It's uh, five minutes, so it's not going to take a whole lot of your time. Um, but it's got some nice graphics and stuff. Uh, anyway, the, uh, the, the general gist here is that we're, uh, we're applying the idea of multi-project speculative execution to containers. So the same thing that we're doing with Git repositories, where if uh, if you have different projects that uh, rely on each other, we make sure to uh, 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 check out the Git repos for all of those projects with all of these uh, changed dependencies in them. Uh, we can now do the same thing with uh, containers so that if a if a project builds a container image and some other project depends on that container image we can actually use the the um, use a version of that container image that was built for a change that hasn't even landed yet um, it's pretty neat uh, it's it's kind of sophisticated and I haven't seen any other uh, any, anything else like it um, if you'd like to get into the the details of it, I've got two URLs up here. Um, uh, the first is if you're, if you're in our open dev system, um, you, we have jobs defined that do this already and you can actually take advantage of this fairly easily. Uh, and the documentation for that is that first URL. If you're running your own Zool, um, you're going to need to do a little bit more work to set up the infrastructure for this. And the second URL uh, tells you how to do that. Um, in, uh, as far as our, uh, our development process goes, um, when we're making large changes to Zool, we like to, to write specifications for them first to get everybody on the same page and we know where we're going. Um, in, in this past six months, uh, we've, we've merged and implemented uh, two specs. Um, one is about uh, using Kubernetes build resources that's uh, that's landed and in production, so you can you can ask Zool and, and Nodepool for a Kubernetes container or a Kubernetes namespace and and use them. Uh, we've also merged support for multiple Ansible versions. So this is a feature where in a Zool job you can specify what version of Ansible you would like to use with a job. So if you're doing something specific to if you need to test. Your, your software with different versions of Ansible, you can do that this way. Uh, or otherwise, if you're just wanting to keep up with the latest versions of Ansible that are out there, you can uh, do that using this feature. As if you were here in the previous session, uh, Clark talked a little bit about uh, the, the open dev transition. In, in very briefly, that's the, the, uh, the infrastructure system that we run that we started running for the OpenStack project and as we've added more projects to our ecosystem and more folks have come to us saying, we like the way that you, uh, the, the tools that you use to develop software, we would like to use it. OpenDev is a very welcoming place for those projects. Um, so if you would like to use uh, Garrett for code review and have Zool running against your project and it's open source, feel free to uh, bring it into the OpenDev environment. Um, uh, it's a multi-tenant deployment, so it's a, that's pretty exciting for us in that we get to exercise a lot of the new features of Zool v3, which uh, were there since the initial release of Zool v3, but 
um, but myself and others as, as, uh, as maintainers of a large Zool installation actually hadn't been able to take advantage of them until this point, so that's pretty fun for us. So if you go to opendev.org slash Zool, um, you'll, uh, you'll see um, uh, our, where our source code is now hosted, because uh, we've also moved the, the source code hosting from the, the, uh, from the previous OpenStack branded domains to OpenDev. Uh, so uh, if you're cloning Zool, please do it from that URL now. Uh, another, in, uh, another bit of news on the deployment front is that our friends at the Ansible project uh, have, um, have been getting very excited about Zool, uh, and they've now deployed a Zool for Ansible. So if you go to dashboard.zool.ansible.com, you will see a Zool running uh, under the Ansible domain that they're starting to bring up projects into. Um, sort of the vanguard of that is the AWX project, which is the, the upstream for Tower, uh, and they've jumped into that in a big way. Uh, and, and I believe AWX is currently gated by that Zool. Uh, so that's a, a big milestone that we're really excited about. Um, uh, back to our, our roadmap, things that, that we expect to be coming up soon because these are, these are specs that are currently in review um, and, and hopefully should land soon and, and, and get implementations. Um, we're improving uh, the, the web dashboard's handling of logs. So yeah, I, I don't know, if you've, if you've been using Zool, you might have noticed that the, the build result page is uh, accumulating more and more information on it. Eventually, we expect that, uh, that when Zool leaves a, a report link for a job, it's actually going to go to the build page instead of directly to the logs. Um, at, but we're only going to do that once we think that the build page is sufficiently useful, um, that is to say, more useful than going directly to the log link. And we think we're pretty close, so that should be happening soon. Uh, but this uh, web dashboard log handling spec sort of lays out uh, everything else that we're doing to, to improve that. Um, we're looking at adding uh, support for an administrative web API so that those of you who are operating Zool right now and wondering why it is you have to log into machines and do things as the super user, um, uh, though there will be other options in the future. Uh, and finally, there is, we're really proud of our architecture diagram for Zool. Um, it's got lots of, um, lots of lines and repeated components uh, because almost everything is scale out except the scheduler, which is the central decision-making part of Zool. Um, there's a spec that's a work in progress for uh, talking about how to scale that out uh, as well. Once we do that, we should have um, uh, we should have a really good story for high availability as well as um, hopefully zero downtime upgrades, things like that. Uh, and then this is, uh, th this is, these are things where I, I have less of an idea of the time frame for them. Um, these are either specs that are still sort of in the development, early in the development process or, uh, or haven't yet appeared yet, but they're ideas that we've bandied around a bit. Um, there's, uh, uh, on, on the GitHub front, there's, uh, GitHub has improved its API in a way that is um, very nicely compatible with the way that Zool sees the world. So we're actually looking forward to using the new checks API uh, for reporting to GitHub instead of the, the current one that we're using. Um, and that'll also bring GitHub back into parity with the uh, Garrett driver, uh, which currently supports inline comments, uh, which is a, a, a neat feature. Um, there's, uh, there's interest in uh, Pagir and that says Bitbucket, and I suppose somebody is interested in it, but it actually really should say um, uh, GitLab. Uh, so yeah, there, there's. Twice, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, let's just say there's interest in various other code review systems, and uh, and we hope to, that that people will show up and, and write drivers for that. Um, I, I there's there's a Pagir driver in progress, so I I feel feel fairly confident that we'll end up with an implementation for that. The others are, are waiting for folks to show up and, and write some code. And, uh, mm -hmm. I forgot to tell you, mm -hmm. um, there, is now a, uh, there is now a Fedora tenant in the software factory in Zool mm -hmm. hooked up to the Fedora Tiger. Oh, neat. So, so uh, late breaking news, there's, uh, 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 there's a Fedora tenant um, in, in, in a Zool that's run by the software factory team that is uh, hooked up to Pagure. So that's, that's getting some early testing. 
Um, uh, we're, we're optimistic that, some, that we'll end up with a, a Google Compute Engine or, 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 uh, and Azure driver um, uh, in the future. There's been interest expressed in that, as well as a Kubernetes operator for Zool itself. So if you're interested in deploying Zool in Kubernetes, uh, once that exists, hopefully that will um, help uh, make that task easier. And that's all I have prepared. We have a few minutes for questions if anybody has some. Yes? So considering how frequently you guys are doing upgrades uh, to the actual Zool infrastructure itself, uh, sitting in on the Cinder uh, project update, and I know some of the other core projects are doing the same thing, they have a, a utility that lets them check between versions, uh, check the config files for deprecated parameters and things of that nature that would break uh, an installation if you're maintaining some of those legacy config files for between upgrades. Do you guys plan on implementing a similar feature set? So uh, uh, for, the, for the recording, a brief summary of the question is, um, uh, are we going to uh, support uh, checking for deprecation, uh, deprecated syntax uh, when we upgrade the, uh, the Zool config file syntax? Um, and uh, the answer is almost certainly. Um, we have so far managed to not remove anything from uh, that. We actually have a, um, we have a deprecation policy in Zool jobs, which sort of obliquely implies a deprecation policy for the Zool syntax itself. Um, I, I, I believe we've established some very long period of time where, uh, where we'd you know, support an older version of something that we removed from the, the uh, the syntax before we actually did it. Um, to, to sort of go to the warning aspect of that, Zool has been getting increasingly chatty in its, um, uh, in its reports back to the code review system. So it's, it's grown the ability to, to leave warning messages about um, uh, sort of uh, atypical situations. Uh, and so I, I certainly expect that, that when, when we get to the point of seriously looking at removing something, we would be uh, we'd be leaving warning messages in the in the code review system for that. Probably, um, maybe possibly warnings in the uh, that would be visible in the web interface as well. Uh, there's actually currently currently if there's an error in the configuration, you can see that in the web interface. Uh, there's a little bell in the top right hand corner. Um, so I think things like that is what we would see. Uh, we're also just in general very reluctant to remove things like that. So we'll you know we. We'll, I'm sure it will happen eventually, uh, but we're not eager to do it. We're more eager to add things. And when we add them, we try to add them in a way that's future compatible, right? So we'll make dictionaries of things even if we don't, even if they only have one key, that sort of thing, right? Because we think we, think we might add another key in the future, so. Uh, any more questions? All right. Any not even any planted questions, no? no. Okay. Uh, all right. Are, are there any questions you would like me to ask? Um, <laughs> hey, man, don't put me on the spot. <laughs> What's up? Oh, yeah. All right. Um, so thank you very much.